Oh. Uh, the Kitchen Pinks just got binned, and then uh, Bronson was able to uh, play Liliana, killing the last creature on Martin's board, and then he just had a completely dominant board position. So, I mean, again, it's largely draw dependent, but I think Bronson's got an edge as far as decks go. I think Andrew's got the edge as far as experience right. goes. Here we are, coming into the finals of Grand Prix Lincoln, Nebraska. We're playing Modern today. Uh, Brian David Marshall. And I'm Jacob, Jacob Van Lunen. We're here with GG's Live. Uh, and uh, Professional Event Services are our hosts this weekend. The excellent hosts they've been. Ran a great tournament here this weekend. Yeah. We haven't had any big delays at all. Uh, it's pretty smooth. We're in the finals. And there you see, we've been talking about it. Bronson Magnet from Florida. Mm -hmm playing aggro alone and he's playing against two-time top eight competitor two-time pro tour top eight competitor andrew cuneo world's 10th place finisher andrew cuneo andrew cuneo is the one who's um playing malira pod playing malira pod and uh i mean he's responsible for the popularity of this deck sure he played it at worlds so there we see a viscera seer yeah andrew at uh, 18 now playing that Overgrown Tomb untapped. And Urborg, Tomb Diogma comes down, and Bronson's got an Inquisition on turn one. <laughs> Ugh. Now, uh, they're, uh, you know, the pair of Court of Calling, definitely the most dangerous cards in uh, Andrew's hand, but if you take the Kitchen Finks, it, uh, really decreases the power level of that birthing pod and Bronson's deck has plenty of ways to kill the Viserys here before the birthing sure. pod comes down sure. in response to the birthing pod coming down. Right, this is also just a two lander for Andrew. So and he's gonna naturally need to draw another land. His deck plays plenty of land and birds of paradise and wall of roots. So he shouldn't have too much of an issue doing that, but he also has Noble Hierarch, I believe. So, I believe Bronson's going to end up taking the Kitchen Finks in this spot. The boards don't have that much value. And Kitchen Finks is actually pretty decent against Bronson's deck, just in general. Yep, Bronson goes ahead and takes the Kitchen Finks. I uh, thought it was a pretty close call. He, he knows the back there better than I do. and. Uh, he clearly thought it was a much closer call than I did also. So John Cuvier, Cuvier, Cuvier? I never know how to say his name, is uh, actually worked with Bronson on this deck. Oh. And he said uh, it's a very good matchup. Uh, as far as we were, we were talking about... Uh, Could not, uh, Bronson couldn't grab it with the uh, Kozilex Inquisition because yeah, it cost four. It cost four. Pay three, cost four. An interesting card in that way. There's the Seismic Assault. And I imagine Bronson's going to go ahead here and pitch that Ghost Quarter uh, and get rid of that Cyrus here. I will scry. Andrew, scrying. Pushing. Card on bottom. Doing a Rebel Arc. It's a pretty good draw step. It's actually about as good as it gets. Uh, end of turn, Andrew can uh, court for one. But, uh, Liliana. Front is going to uh, add one to that Liliana. And uh, he wants to discard a card. Discards a life on one. He 
can just get the life in the loan back. Sure. When uh, he finds grain source. You can actually have multiple copies of it. Cord for zero. Finds himself a uh, dried arbor. And does uh, Bronson want to destroy that? It's not luck like it. He's got multiple ways to destroy it. He's got Dark Blast and he's got. A land, I believe? Yeah, a land would be good enough here. Andrew has a few different options here, but... Uh... Cuvier, by the way. Thanks, Frank. Alright, and a kitchen thanks for Andrew Cunio. Going to put him back up to 17 here. Yeah. And, uh, Probably up to 19. Uh, up to up 17. To He's going to pay him for actually man to use the ability. Seems like a reasonable choice. Yep. So, Andrew taking three, going out of 14, then getting two, going up to 16. Uh, minus minus one counter on the kitchen things. Andrew going to search his library, most likely for a ranger of EOS here. Perhaps a murderous red cap. Murderous red cap would uh, be a pretty good counter to the Leon on the table. Now, ranger, go get two visceral seers. Seems very reasonable. Got yeah, mistress here and noble hierarch. I like that. Here we're seeing like the real power of Birthing Pod. He just, you know, played a Kitchen Finks and he had a 2 1, a 3 2, and a Noble Hierarch, and a Viserys so you're still in his hand. Sure. And, you know, that's really impressive for, just, for one card to do all by itself. I think it's Countryside Crusher. He's not a Dark Blast in his hand. And no lands either. Yeah, I think his hand is uh, a Flame Jab, which can uh, you know, do a little bit of work, but not a ton. A, uh, a pair of countryside crushers and a life in the lung. Bronson with a few different options here. Again, this deck is just one of these decks that offers up like a million different it's, options. It's, it actually it's so is complicated. complicated beyond what you might imagine it would be even. Just gonna go ahead and play jab. Thanks. The type play. It's Crusher, Crusher land. Yeah, now the uh, the Drydar Rancher Kino has in play can be used to uh, kill Liliana. Or wait, he can flame jab it, correct? I don't, I don't think he has a full jam. I thought he drew one off the top. I may be wrong though. Oh, no, no, no. The flame job was used in the kitchen wing, so I apologize. Yeah. Andrew's constructing a house of cards here. Quite a lot going on on the side of the table. <coughs> now, uh, Liliana probably just saying minus two here again. Countryside Crusher, Magnum.
Yeah, now, uh, if Franz and uh, minus two Siciliana, now that he, uh, it's just bad for him. Kind of has to, though. more value to his Rebel Arc by sacrificing uh, another Viserys here. Previously, the Rebel Arc only had one graveyard target. Now, uh, he's going to get more value out of it. I don't think Bronson's going to play another red-black land. See how many uh, Greenlands Bronson plays. Well, so. Check for five. Get five damage from into the red zone here. Harmonic wow. Sliver. Ooh, and that's going to be pretty good here. Wow. Um, for those of you unaware, Harmonic Sliver is a 1-1 one, one for one, a green, and a white. It says whenever a sliver enters the battlefield under your control, you want to destroy target artifact or enchantment. How come you're so familiar with that? <laughs> I was holding a land. Kills a noble hierarch. Turns fetch tech pressure into a uh, four four. <laughs> yeah, I have a Saras here and a noble hierarch. Back in a play for Andrew over here. I think we're gonna see Macaeus. Yeah. The unhallowed. Now all of uh, Andrew's creatures have Undying. Yeah. Which is... Uh, good. Yeah. Very it's good. What? Especially when I have a Cyrus here. Oh, is it non-humans? Okay. It might just be non-human creatures. It's humans die when they attack you. Another Finch Side Crusher for Bronson. And he just passed the turn. Now, uh, yeah. Do you know your social security number now? Do you know it now? That's Intimidate. Yes. Among its many lines of text. Intimidate. Some of which Bronson Magnum will read right now. Yeah. He's probably played against the card. Didn't take too long reading it. He's got a lot of text now. There's Malaya. Malaya. Malyra. Okay. And Andrew Cunio takes the first game here. Wow. Didn't look like that was going to happen, but kind of, uh, Bronson yeah. never really got started. He didn't have any kind of, he didn't have any dredge action going. Yeah, he never turned green. He was a little so short on it. land. Yeah, he really would, he would have been happy to see, see a dark blast in there. Yeah, I mean, just about something anything that would get would the, Something that would get it started. I mean, he's got to, uh, He's got to deal with the early pressure that uh, is put on him. But at the same time, like a mid game, if there's a birthing pot on the table, just about anything can become uh, something extremely dangerous. Post board, Bronson gets access to Ancient Grudge, though, which should help him out in that department, give him a little more longevity. Um, also, post board, uh, Bronson has access to Torpor, a card that will uh, probably work wonders here. Uh, Andrew's gonna bring in, gonna bring in. We're looking for Ivan Loach. 
Ivan Cloach, we need your deck for the deck check. Ivan Cloach, please come to the main stage. So you see the bracket, you see how the route these guys took to get here. Uh, Bronson played against uh, Samuel Carls in the first round. Samuel's playing fairies. Yes. And, uh, and then uh, in the other end of that bracket, Mary Jacobson and Samuel Friedman matched up in a clash of, you know, clash very similar robots. decks. Uh, clash, yeah, Clash of the Robots. Uh, Mary's playing more burn than Samuel, but Samuel ended up coming out victorious. Yeah, he had uh, uh, like, uh, spring leaf drums, which Mary did not have. Yeah. Which where she had, um, where she had shot in the black. Correct. So, and then Bronson defeated Samuel in the, in the semifinals to advance to the finals. On the other side of the table, we saw Luis Scott Vargas with Blue White Tron against Matt Mercier with Jun. Uh, Luis won that match and had to go up and face against Andrew Cuneo, who was playing against Derek Rutledge, also playing John. Andrew's playing Malira Pod. Andrew won that match, a huge load off his mind. He came here really with the intent of qualifying for Barcelona. By getting to the top four, he wins an invite at Air to Barcelona. Yeah, a very exciting match for him to win. Uh, and then, then he, he beats Luis, Luis yeah. which is a bad matchup for him, Yeah, by all means. Yeah. Uh, if anybody had the opportunity to watch Luis play against Matt Mercier, uh, I don't think I've seen somebody draw better than Luis during that match. <laughs> that was supposed to be a bad match for him too, right? It was supposed to be a very bad match for Luis, but Luis uh, in game one had a uh, Iona in play on turn three. Turn three. Actual. What are, what are they looking at here? Are they resolving something? Are they still mulliganing? Oh, they're still mulliganing. Okay. I thought he was revol resolving a fetch land with four lands in hand and I don't know. Thinking about the ancient guards, it looks like. And the ancient guards just coming in. It looks like it's going to the side, honestly. There you get a look at Bronson. Excuse me? I said there you get a look at Bronson. Yep. In so, the zone. And Blake. Yeah, Blake, Blake Rasmussen, Rasmussen. Very nervous in the background there. Yeah. Eating his fingernails like they were chicken wings. <laughs> uh, and you see a little bit of Andrew's arm in the, uh, on the right of your screen. There he is, Andrew Kinnear. Two Pro Tour top eights. Two Pro Tour top eights is a very impressive stat yeah. to be home. Yeah. 2000 and 2001 team competition. Uh, teaming with uh, Aaron Forsyth and um, is it not, not Patrick Johnson, uh, what was his name? No, I don't remember. Um, no, no, not Scott Johnson. Pat, um, no, I can't remember his name. Their teammate. I don't remember. Yeah. I do remember back in those days, so it was uh, a Mercadian team event, Team Rochester Mercadian Mass. Sure, that was that was 2000. That was uh, the first one he won, I believe, and the second one was... Uh, invasion Block. The Invasion Block? Yeah, the... No, uh, uh, wait, was that right? Mercadian? I think it was the Invasion Block... Uh, no, it was an Invasion Block, yeah. No, it, it's a long time ago. It was a long time ago. I know the Singles Invasion Block Rochester event was won by Mike Pastulnik, right? It was. But the team event, I believe, was won by Andrew Cunha. If he wins, uh, after we, afterward we can ask him. <laughs> we didn't win. Well, if he, uh, yeah, I mean, if he wins this tournament afterward, we can ask him. He's just an interesting guy. I was talking to him. He's a, he's a big pinball aficionado. Oh, plays, really? Plays in a band. That's awesome. Yeah. Sounds like a cool guy. Yeah, I, re I really like talking to him a lot. Pinball's a uh, pretty like fun pastime. And it's interesting how that's kind of uh, yeah, it used to be something that people were really, really into. Yeah. I like the Who. <laughs> yeah. My favorite safe cracker. Fairly obscure machine. But one of my favorites. Have you been to the Pinball Museum in Asbury Park? I've not. <laughs> 
Sounds like fun. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. You just pay by the hour, and you can just play as many pinball machines as you want. Really? Yeah. Man. From all throughout really history. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, that actually sounds really fun. It's, uh, true that, that, like, generationally, I feel like I, uh, I miss that. I, I spent a lot of time in arcades as a kid. Sure. You know, it's, uh, you know, nowadays, it's, you know, parents don't really let their kids go places on their own, but... Yeah. Yeah. It's probably good that they didn't. When I was a kid, we went to the arcade, and it was firebombed by the Russian mob <laughs> with kids in it, so not even kidding. Jeez. <laughs> My brothers and I got kicked out of the arcade a few times. Not even doing anything bad. It was just like, yeah. you know. Just firebombing people. Kids, you know? <laughs> Blaming it on the Russian mob. <laughs> that was me. We traveled yeah. back in time yeah. as children to firebomb your arcade. But, uh, I mean, we played a lot of Street Fighter 2 I mean, in the early I, 90s. I should say, allegedly, the Russian mob. Just to be. You never know. Yeah. Anyway, we're, we're, we're about to get... Looks like we're about to get started in Game 2. So much shuffling. A lot of shuffling going on here. These decks will certainly be randomized. The only way they can be more randomized is if it were on Magic Online. Yeah. <laughs> Some Andrew would like. He, he prefers to play on Magic Online. He's Gainsay on Magic Online. Um, oh, he's Gainsay. Yeah, he's Gainsay. He, suddenly a light goes off. Oh, yeah. What's up, Gainsay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does not, uh, you know, he still doesn't always feel comfortable playing physical paper magic. It feels like he... I mean, I feel like he's certainly feeling a little more comfortable now. He's uh, the finals with Grand Prix. Again, the top 16 finish at Worlds. There's an Inquisition of Kozilek. See a Dismember, an Eternal Witness, the Chaos, a Wall of Roots, three lands. You take Wall of Roots? Huh. No, you gotta take Eternal Witness. Yeah. You should take Witness. You have to take Witness, because. I mean, Witness is really good against Bronson's deck. It, like, counteracts what you're trying to do yeah. so well. You have to take witness. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to take the witness. He has a Raven's Crime in hand and a Liliana. He's definitely taking witness. Okay. He's thinking about it, though. I mean, maybe he has a turn two confidant. If you just turn to confidant, you should take this member, right? Sure. And, then, and I think you have just uh, given yeah. us cracked the puzzle evidence that he's gonna. But he's gonna again, you can just get play. it back. But I guess you'll have a few cards by then, and you yeah, know, it's like you get a draw two out of it, and you uh, you make Andrew like pay a lot of mana, and that draw two along with your Raven's Crime in hand and your Liliana is gonna do quite a bit of work. Bomb. Yeah. I mean, we didn't see that one coming. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think that was definitely the right play on Bronson's part. I think if you don't have Dark Confidant on your hand, it's uh, sure. very easily to witness. In Bronson's quarterfinal matchup, he uh, sideboarded out all his two drops, and his opponent postboard had a full set of spell snares and oh threads of disloyalty. God. Oh my god. So his opponent had eight dead cards in his deck. Oh my god. That would explain how miserable he looked when I walked over and watched a little bit of that match. Yeah, and uh, it was especially bad because, you know, he was Raven's Criming his opponent, and his opponent was at the end holding double threats after getting Raven's Crimed a bunch, expecting to, you know, steal a goyf and get oh back in the god, game. Oh my god, he's trying to hold on to those cards. Yeah. Wow. A wall of roots from Andrew Cunio on turn two. What's going on here? Oh, he's. He did not resolve his dark confidant trigger. It was caught by the judge, though. A table judge is a nice thing to have sometimes. Yeah. Can I draw that yep. card? And there's Liliana. And uh, Eliliana's going to put some hurt on Andrew because now Andrew's going to be forced to tap out for that uh, for that witness. Yeah. And then uh, 
you know, Bronson with all those extra cards has been accruing from that Dark Confidant. It's going to be able to plus one Liliana and Raven's Prime quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, he's going to be in a pretty good spot. Yeah. So, Andrew with the Eternal Witness targets a dismember, as one might expect. Bronson uh, reveals his card for Dark Confidant, and it's a flame jab. Draws, and it's a land. No, it's really good for him. Yeah, that's good. very, very good for him. Bronson at 19 now from that Dark Confidant trigger. Let's see what he does. He's going to go ahead and flame jab this Eternal Witness. Discard a card. Attacks for two. It's Andrew down to 15 here. And does he have another Dark Confidant, or is he uh, or is he going to start Raven Scrimming? I think he has to start Raven Scrimming, right? It or depends whether or not he, he has he, a second he, Confidant. Right, not, and whether or not he has Life in the Loom or, or so, something to get back. And he's certainly going to tick up a Sloviana. I'll do that first, just to get a little more information. See what Andrew discards. Uh, he's already written down some of the cards in Andrew's hands. He can get a you know a more narrow idea of what Andrew has if Andrew discards a card that he hasn't seen yet. Discards a swamp. Are they blue? And uh Are they blue? Tapping both. Is this uh two Ravens Crime trick? Yep. It's a double Ravens Crime. Andrew gets rid of the Micaeus, as one might expect. And Bronson uh, with another Raven's Crime. Another Raven's Crime. Yep. Andrew gets rid of the Dismember, huh? Yes. I'm interested to see what Andrew has in his hand. Perhaps the fourth land. And, uh,. Is that a Kitchen Pinks? Oh no, it looks like there's a white border on that card. Oh no, it is a Kitchen Pinks. Bronson going down to 18 here, gonna sacrifice that fetch land. So by the way, uh, Andrew played a Golgari Rock Farm. Ooh, we played a rock farm. The bounce lands from uh, Ravnica Block the forest. are uh, some of my favorite cards ever printed. Yeah, same. Personally, uh, for a Simic. I'm Rose a big Chamber. Is It Boiler Works kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're a Simic kind of guy. Yeah. cards in Andrew's hand, too. Yep. So, uh, one of which is a forest. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think you have to Inquisition. I think you can just plus one Liliana, discard your Inquisition, and then Raven's Crime. <laughs> okay, place Inquisition. Oh, double forest. We'd like to make them discard things, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like if you only have two cards in hand, you might as well just plus one Liliana. You can trap him on three lands. Yeah. Okay. Is that kitchen fix him? Nothing. And He's going to flame jab, flame jab it. And that leaves Andrew with nothing but two forests in hand. Yeah. Bronson with a confidant. And now another confidant. Oh, wow. Yeah. Bronson just has this game so, so, um, yeah. Oh, and there's a birthing pod. A birthing pod, pretty good. And ooh, Andrew takes two damage. Uh, didn't really need to take there. Right. Or does he have a land off screen that we don't see? Bronson reveals two lands off the ooh. ooh. Uh, attacking uh, Andrew down to 13. Yeah. And uh, that's a seismic assault. Oh, well, look at that. I appreciate the original Exodus arc. The weather light running away from uh, Volrath's ickiness. Ickiness? <laughs> <laughs> Good. 
It's a good flavor term there. <laughs> Uh, the birthing pot up the top, which is about perfect for Andrew here, but uh, it's going to be difficult to race this seismic assault. Just unload, doing a massive amount of damage to him. Looks like he might have drawn a Ranger of EOS. Wow, I mean those are good draw steps. Yeah. And that's one of the major problems in playing a deck where you're like honing your Ravens prime your opponent's hand away. Oh no, he Kitchen Finks. Ooh, Kitchen Finks. I mean, still, which could be uh, you know, Ranger of EOS pretty easily. And that's probably better than a Ranger Vias. Yeah. And then you get to you know, gain a bunch of life, then you get to sacrifice it, you get the 2 1. Trigger on the stack, trigger on the stack. Very nicely played by Bronson. Because the Kitchen Pinks has a trigger when it comes into play, he can target it with the Seismic Assault and. Uh, Andrew never gets an opportunity to birthing pot it away because you can if only use a, it at sorcery speed. If that's just a normal creature he draws, if he just draws a vanilla three mana creature, then yeah. Andrew never yields priority and he can sacrifice it to birthing pot. But because it doesn't enter the battlefield trigger, yeah. that Andrew gives, never gets an it enters the battlefield and then Bronson has a chance to respond. Exactly. And there's life from the low. Probably game. Now as a uh, Tarmogoyf, just to add to uh, yeah. the strength of Bronson's draw. Ooh. Obstinate Bailoff. Two, two lands will be enough to deal with Obstinate Bailoff. Andrew, going up to 17 here. And uh, he two cards off the Dark Compa. A land and a land. Oh, nice. And draws first turn. Does not dredge the life no long. Uh, tax. Uh, now they're in, in the graveyard, so there's a Doing sorcery creature in land. I believe it's uh, seven Walker. altogether. Ooh, Planeswalker. Yep. So eight. Uh, Andrew's going to pull to nine from that attack. Oh. Shows him the lands he needs to kill him from there. Yeah, and that'll do it. Oh, there was an instant also the dismember. Oh, so that's why it actually put him at eight, so the four lanes were enough to uh, finish it off. All right. Going into game three here. And this game will decide the champion of Grand Prix Lincoln. Uh, we've been playing Modern all weekend. Uh, seen some of the game's best. Luis Scott Vargas made it all the way to the top four of this Grand Prix. Yep. Uh, we also had Mary Jacobson make her top eight premiere. We How had, big a deal uh, do you think it was that uh, Wild Nakata was banned for his turn? Like, in the, like, how much of a shakeup was that on these uh, on the decks we saw? Um, I think it matters. I think uh, in a lot of ways, the, the Tempered Steel players probably would have been on Zoo. Okay. Uh, not Tempered Steel necessarily, but Artifact Aggro. Sure. I feel like the Artifact Aggro deck, uh, when Wild Nakata was around, I just never really understood why people played it. I mean. You know, you opened yourself up to getting blown out by decks that Ancient Grudge in their sideboard, yeah. and you know, your deck really didn't have much more like, aggressive capability than you know, a pure zoo deck. But now that Wild nakano has gone, you know, it really encourages people, if they, want to, if they want to get aggressive to the extent that they're you know, attacking the creatures and killing their opponent on you know, the third or fourth turn, they have to be playing these artifact aggro decks. And you know, to do that, you know, yeah, you're playing this extremely powerful deck that's especially strong against the slower decks in the format, but you know you're opening yourself up to you know perhaps having to play against a deck like Bronson's, which is just going to decimate you. Right, which is feeding on, or or a deck like Luisa, which is also poised to feed on some of the aggro decks. Exactly. I like Luisa's deck a lot. Yeah, I think Luisa's deck was really good. Uh, he had, you know he had two wrath effects in his deck. Uh, now I'm I didn't get a chance to talk to him about this unfortunately, but. You know, I imagine a lot of people walked into those. People don't see Day of Judgment or Wrath of God sure. coming out of these Tron decks nowadays. Uh, most of the deck lists you see, the decks that are top in the PDQs on Magic Online, the decks that are ranked dailies, they don't play Day of Judgment or Wrath of God. So, I mean, that's a pretty big edge to have. Right. Just have, you know, Wrath of God's always good, but Wrath of God's a lot better if your opponent doesn't know it's in your deck. Sure. 
And uh, that's where we saw Luis beat Mary in game two of the match we watched them play. Right. Uh, he was all set up for her next wave of attacks when he racked away the first one. Yeah. And you see how, like, just how securely you could hide behind that, too. You know, you're like, okay, I'm going to clear your board, and I have these, like, two answers. Yeah. Yeah, it's in great. And obviously, his end game against those types of decks is uh, about as good as it gets. Elish Norn. Yeah. Elish Norn. Which is, may uh, in play on turn four. Or turn three, potentially. Uh, in uh, Luis' quarterfinal match, we uh, watched him play all three Ursa pieces on his first three turns and an Azorius Signet on turn two. Oh, so on, on turn three, he was able to tap the Azorius Signet into two Ursa pieces, float a white, leave the tower untapped. Oh, boy. Gifts get Iona and Unburial Rites, oh, and then, you know, have an Iona Shield of Memoriam play on turn three. Ugh. That's and disgusting. I, you know, All right, so ooh, Andrew hands. is on the play. And this is it. Is this so the seven-card hand that I can win Grand Prix Lincoln, Nebraska? It's it's the question I'll have to ask themselves. Themselves. Looks like both looks like both players are keeping. Really thinking. Is Andrew thinking about keeping his hand or shot? Yeah. Alright, Andrew chose to keep. And that uh, looks like Bronson chose to do the same. Alright. This time it does not look like Bronson has the uh, turn one form of disruption in his hand. He's gonna play a blood crypt tap to pass the turn back over to Andrew. Andrew now, uh, with a hand that looks a little bit slow, but uh, has a lot of his uh, cards that are good against Bronson's deck. You know, just having a birthing pot in play against Bronson is a really powerful thing. All right, an Inquisition of Kozilek from Bronson. It's going to allow him to uh, look at Andrew's hand, and he sees a Maelstrom Pulse, a pair of cords, and a birthing pod. So, uh, Bronson. Probably going to take the Maelstrom Pulse here. I think I saw a Dark Confidant on Ascent. Did you see a Maelstrom Pulse? Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. It almost looks like it's part of the play map. Yeah. <laughs> Bronson could also take a Chord here, depending on Ascent. And again, this is uh, one of the things about Bronze's deck. I mean, the deck may look cool to everybody at home. It, it's extremely powerful. It's really well poised for the format, but this deck is difficult. You know, you're, you're really going to have to grind out your matches if you want to win a tournament with that deck. Andrew ran in 19. All right, well, he's one of the few players we've seen go to time in multiple rounds. Yeah. I mean, he's taking his time with decisions, and that's perfectly respectable considering. Oh yeah, I don't mean like he's playing slow. I think his deck is, just takes a lot of time. He doesn't just he sets up these inexorable wins, but. All right, Andrew Cunia playing another green source. This will allow him to end of turn cord for zero, so he can go grab a Dryad Arbor. Right, and accelerate and, uh, his mana. Yeah, develop a bit. Uh, did not choose to uh, stick the birthing pod with that opportunity. Bronson ready for the birthing pod with an ancient grudge. A dark confidant from Bronson. And looks like he's ready to pass the turn. Is Flame Jab an instant or a sorcery? I believe it's sorcery. It's a sorcery, right? Yeah. Right, Flame Jab's a sorcery, right, Rashad? Yeah. Okay. It would be so, kind of sick otherwise. It would actually just be like. Sickest thing. <laughs> it would be an every action. <laughs> All right. Andrew choosing not to court for zero on Bronson's end step. There's Kitchen Pinks. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Kitchen Pinks is really strong against Bronson's deck. And in game two, we really didn't get to see that strength because. You know, Bronson just kind of had every single angle that the stack can have. But. Uh... 
All right, so it looks like Bronson's going to be able to uh, cast a Liliana, make Andrew sacrifice the Kitchen Finks, and then use a Flame Jab to finish it off. And that's something we've been seeing him do over and over again. He, yeah, he's Liliana to... looks great in this draft. Yeah, I mean, he, he continually has to, you know, almost two for one himself in order to deal with the Kitchen Finks, but he's got all these he, extra he also cards doesn't mind getting, He also doesn't mind getting cards into his graveyard. Yeah. You know, if he can discard a Flame Jab or a Life from the Loam, that's fine. Yeah, no big deal. I mean, he recoups the cards so easily because of Life from the Loam and Dark Confidant that it's really not a big deal for him to, you know, let his opponent out card. I think going to win this GP. I think you're right. It's really exciting for him. This is the deepest he's ever gone in a tournament. He's a PTQ player from Florida. And, yep. you know, yesterday I was talking about how he had no buys, but I was actually mistaken. He had won a GPT. So he oh, okay. actually had three buys. I mean, okay. Yeah. That's why he made the trip out here. It's a, a friend of David Sharpman. Okay. Yeah. We got a lot of Floridians cheering for him on Facebook. Led by Frank Lepore, shaking the pom-poms. Very nice. I mean, I'm always excited to see the new guy win. Sure. Reveals a forest. Draws first turn. And this confidant is kind of running away with the game at this point. Yeah. And that's what Dark Confidant does. And Dark Confidant, a card you know, we've seen surprisingly little of in this modern format. Yeah. I was surprised that we weren't seeing it, the zoo decks go back to it. Dark zoo, as it was called. That's what I played in Valencia. Well, through coverage, I slowly learned that I've actually just played every deck ever. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, going to 19 for this attack from Dark Confidant. He's just slowly trying to build a hand that I let him win. And that's what his deck does. So, a cord for two. It's 12 roots, okay. That counts as two mana for cord purposes. Yes, it does. Uh, yeah, Wolver, it's one of the best cards to have alongside Cord Falling for just that reason. This is, guy who, uh, this is gonna, yeah, I guess, get a murderous red cap and kill Liliana? Or kill yeah. our Confidant? It looks like he's gonna grab a red cap and kill the Confidant. You had pointed out that the compound was kind of running away with the game, and uh, Andrew there was was able to, you know, effectively deal with that. But sure. you know, now he's down to you know, two cards in his hand. It's uh, you know, not looking especially great for him. He, that birthing pot in his hand also. Uh, Bronson has an ancient virgin. Right, right lined up. reading uh, Murderous Red Cap. When it comes into play, it deals damage equal to its power to uh, target creature or player. I'm trying to figure out if he can do anything with that Dark Blast there. Goes on the stack, give it a Dark Blast. It's one, it's one, it's one damage. Still gets the confidence. Bronson starting a land, and you're following suit. Uh, bring that 
back. Cat. Going to uh, do a damage to Liliana, presumably. I'm gonna do one more. And uh, Bronson gonna finish it off. Uh, is that a life from the land of hand? It is a life from the land. So those lands, you know, it, it may have looked like he just three for one himself, but in reality, right. that was a complete non-issue. Andrew Cunio, no, no haste creatures, but he can tutor up right. to deal with the Liliana. And it's a birthing pot. It's going to uh, go ahead, sacrifice the swallow birds, and I guess he's grabbing another kitchen fence. Yep. Andrew popping himself up to 21 here. But, uh, it's got a long way to go. Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's a little bit left in this match. I mean, that's a dark lust. Bronson, uh, going to Ancient Grudge, this uh, birthing pot almost immediately. Returning uh, a bunch of lands back to his hand before he does so. Uh, he could plus one to Liliana if he wants and discard the Ancient Grudge, that way he only has to pay one. Right. And that way he can also uh, shoot the Kitchen Finks twice, then the Kitchen Finks can't kill the Liliana. And that leaves Andrew with no cards in hand and just a 2-1. And the next turn he can finish off the Flame Child. And that seems like it may be the right play. And that's exactly what he chooses to do. Well done. Your brain may be jello after this <laughs> long day, but still getting it done. Bronson Magnum. Goes up to 23, and uh, now he's completely out of gas. And Bronson's got a life in the loan. Right. And, uh, you know, that life in the loan, you know, every turn it can be an arc lightning. Yeah. It can be a mind twist for three. Yeah, he needs basically like a bajuka bog or something here. Right now. Right now. <laughs> and it's not looking great for Andrew in this spot. Ooh, and a birthing pot off the top. That's actually pretty good. Yeah. I mean, the fact that Bronson discarded that ancient grudge may actually get him into trouble here. Great idea, Jake. Yeah, I mean, well, Andrew would have had to top deck the birthing pot for that to have been the wrong yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he did. And I mean, that was the one turn window that Andrew had an opportunity to do that because after that, so now he know, goes gets Ranger, goes gets Ranger Leos. I believe. Or does he just get obstinate bailoff and figure he has to attack here? He can't do that. He has to get Ranger Vios and like two creatures. Two. Yep. Yeah. That makes sense, right? But he's just going to lose everything here anyway, right? Just going to. I guess he yeah, I mean, he, uh, he doesn't quite lose everything. Sure does. It's like untap. Uh, we'll have a birthing pod. Yeah, I'll have a birthing pod. He's gonna be like untap. You know, shoot your guy, shoot your guy, sacrifice a creature. Well, he can't make him sacrifice a guy. He only has one counter on his Liliana. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, Andrew will still have one guy in play. Loan. Gonna get back another free lance here. The other thing is that Andrew's going to get the scry, too, so Andrew's going to top deck something. What's that? Andrew's yeah. going to get the scry, too. And the thing is, uh, Bronson's going to have to target this Viserys here first, because he doesn't want to let Andrew scry more than once. Right. And Andrew's not going to sacrifice multiple guys to the Viserys here, because no. 
you know, he wants to make Bronson use the cards that are necessary to uh, you know, deal with that. Andrew Cornea. Keep or no? I mean, this is this is tough. He's like, I know I can find a way out of this. I mean, he's he's pretty good at this game. Yeah, I'm pretty good with this deck. Yeah, probably played this deck more than anybody else. Yeah. So he left he left one card on top. Is what happened. All right. Enough of the land that turn? Uh, he discarded two lands to kill the. Couldn't he have just dark blasted and then discarded a land? And played a land? Uh, I mean, again, operationally, deck extremely difficult to work out. Yeah, so he used three flame jabs that turn. Uh, he could have uh, dark blasted. So Malira here, gets Eternal Witness. Witness. Eternal Witness gets back. Murder, murder Shred Cap. Cap. Murder Shred Cap. Kills. Yeah, and suddenly, Andrew Cunio looking like he's in a dominating position in this game. He drew that birthing pot on the key turn, and it, uh, it allowed him to dig his way out of that hole that he was in. So now he can sacrifice Murder Shred Cap into uh, Revel Arc. Rebel Arc into Malira and Viscera Seer. And I mean that's and that should be enough. Ooh, but it's not that simple. Bronson uh, has a Bajuka bog that he just returned to his hand. Ah. So the Bajuka Bog's gonna come down. What do you got? All right. And I think uh, you know, Bronson was really hoping to dredge himself into an ancient grudge there. Did not. And I mean, this is a really tight game three going on right now. Bronson is uh, likely going to be forced to uh, bog to bog this turn. It seems like bad things happen if you don't bog. Yeah, I mean, I, I assume what he's thinking about is, uh, I mean, he's probably going to want to flame jab twice to get rid of the noble hierarch and the eternal witness, then bog. Sure. Um, That'll minimize the effectiveness of the uh, birthing pod, but uh, you know Andrew's still gonna go grab a uh, rebel arc, and then he's gonna have to deal with that. But you know, if he grabs the rebel arc, then Bronson can you know flame jab away the rebel arc when sure. there's nothing in the graveyard. Flame jab the red cap, red cap you. Yeah, then he's going to just get rid of the red cap. He throws the bog at it. Yeah, I mean, that seems like a fine play. He's seen Andrew Cunio's deck list. So perhaps Andrew only has one copy of Murderous Red Cap and one copy of the... Uh... Andrew may still have a Phyrexian Metamorph, however. So uh, that doesn't do much right now, though. Because he can't sacrifice the Witness and copy the Witness. Does Andrew Cunio have a uh, 
You lose one ranger. So it looks like Andrew maybe out of fours. Interesting. Unless he kept Limbala in his deck, which I highly doubt. Yeah. So well played on Bronson's part. Thank you for three. Bronson turned to 16 from that attack. Gets an exalted trigger from the noble hierarchy. Yeah, sure. Wondering where the extra point comes from. And then here goes Witness, okay. Ooh, so maybe he does go for it. What do you have in his deck? Well, we've, we've seen uh, in Tumor Exarchs. Oh, he has Obstinate Bailoff left. We've seen Obstinate Bailoff. Got that one turn window to draw this birthing pod. Bronson's hoping he hits an ancient grudge on the top three cards of his library now and he dredges his life now. Well, he's gonna get the Juka Bog back and the Bog will give him a, a, a few more turns. Yeah. Does not mill out the ancient grudge. Does not hit the ancient grudge exactly, so he's uh. He's going to be forced to uh, flame jab away this noble heart and then uh, play a lot before I reach it. Or I guess he's going to have to play with the Juke Bog. Or maybe he can wait one turn. The Burning Park going to be activated once. Sure. So. He decides to do it now. I think that's very yeah. simple. What I get, what I get. Bronson uh, going to 12th in this attack from Andrew. Ooh, Andrew drew a shrink off. I've definitely seen uh, Andrew take his slow attack route to victory. Field there. Powerful card against Andrew that uh, did not come into play this game. You only get three, right? Um, he doesn't only get three. Didn't he already have one in his hand? Don't you only get three? Did he just get he four three. lands? Can you ask her? Did he just get four lands? What? Okay. He's like, I just want more lands. Yeah. All right. So he may just be looking through them and seeing which one sure. he uh, wants to take here. Turn. Uh, Play a lot more, which is best to turn over to Andrew. Who's three hits away? Yeah, three hits away from being the Grand Prix Lincoln champion. Everybody loves the comeback story. Andrew Cunio showing us how to make a comeback. <laughs> One of our fellow Magic Gather columnists is listening to Adam Stavorsky. Hello, Adam. <laughs> he said our voices are dreamy. Oh, well, they are. You know. Right now, Andrew uh, drew a bird of paradise. So, so uh, what twos does he have left? Well, he still has point? Malira, right? Um, does he have more Maliras? He, I, I guess, yeah, he definitely has more Maliras. We've, we've, seen, we've seen one. We've only seen one this game, yeah. Okay, get you to eight. I gotta tell you, that opposite Bailoff has closed out more games for him. Yeah. <laughs> it's done some work. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Andrew, let me go ahead and 
sacrifice that bird of paradise. Let's see what he grabs. I assume it's going to be a Malira. What that he wants might to do be is all that he has left. Oh, what he wants to do is just uh, to Waller it. Oh, yeah. That seems I feel like he wants better. to keep like Brunson from just stocking up on enough lands, maybe to kill the uh, Bailoff. Yes, I mean that has more toughness than anything else that you grab. Seems ideal. Bronson dredges the life in the lump, and still no uh, ancient grudge. Let's see. He's got enough land in here to flame jab at this point, right? Yeah, now he'll uh, definitely be able to flame jab it. He'll also be able to uh, Raven's Prime away the last card in Andrew's hand. He's like, I'll just leave these out. I'm going to be using them to pay for stuff. There goes Shriek Maw. So he uh, successfully gets the Shriek Maw out of Andrew's hand. Okay. It's rid of the obstinate bail off. This game, this game's yeah. a grind. I mean, we've seen a lot of Bronson's games be like this. Yeah. It's a uh, somewhat difficult thing to have to battle your way through. Just trying to figure out what you need from the game. No, I thought I should give it to us. It sounds like candy. All right, and uh, Andrew goes ahead and grabs himself a kitchen face. Hey, it'll wait. Thank you. Raises land. Why not? Bronson going to dredge life in the lung yet again. Is it a grudge? Nope. Still no grudge. You're going up to 25 now. And, uh, and I think for Bronson's library, it's getting dangerously low here. Yeah. But he he, he won't get that because he can. Oh, okay. No, he's, mm -hmm. he's still got plenty. And of he can just dredge every turn. Yeah. Instead of draw. Yeah, if you don't have the, enough cards in your deck oh, to dredge, okay, you cannot. Okay. Alright, so now uh, Bronson's going to start hitting land drops and attacking with a lob claw reaches. Yeah. The deck doesn't always win in the prettiest way, but... <laughs> yeah. Alright, attacks for six. Andrew falling to 19 here. Here you go. Well, we're going to 18, second. Nope. Uh, Andrew find here. Did he get an offset bail off? What did he draw here? He drew a, uh, I think he drew a Holly Prime Edge. Well, I thought it was a bail off, but. Mm. Bail off would be very good. He can get Rebel Arc. Alright. And another kitchen fix. <laughs> Last one. Okay. And I mean, he's uh, I mean, even with all this dredging going on from Bronson, uh, Andrew's library is almost as small. <laughs> Ooh, and Andrew takes a draw step. 
Yeah. Or Bronson takes a draw set, rather. Well, at some point, you're going to find like a seismic assault or... Aggressive confidant, Derek. I mean, he's an eight. Yeah. Your point twenty-two. I guess. I mean, if it's if it gets to that point, he can just kill it with a flame jab. Sure. Like if if there's a chance that it's going to kill him. This is a this is a really really tight game three. Like what a game to end yeah. this grand prix. Yeah. I mean, Andrew's deck has just not had the maneuver, the ability to maneuver at all. Yeah, I mean he's I mean he's drawn very well too. Yeah. I mean, Boom. <laughs> Trades. Not so aggressive. <laughs> I agree. And Birds of Paradise getting sacrificed. And I think it's going to be another Wall of Roots. Taking a good look through his deck, seeing what his plan is. He can't convert that into a three anymore, right, as far as we know. Uh, I don't think it's possible anymore, no. Oh, yes, he can. He can get a harmonic slip. Actually. Which I don't think he wants to get. I do not think he wants that to get That would kill his birthing pod. Right. That would. Yeah, it's a must. Yes. So, life is we'll back once again. I, I, how many seismic assaults has he flipped by? I think all of them. I've seen a lot of them. They're pretty distinctive. Okay, back with Lava Claw reaches. Yeah. Number six. I'm actually really impressed here that Bronson knows that the only three he has left is the Harmonic Slower. I mean, he saw his opponent's deck list. Yeah. Otherwise, he would have played that turn much differently. Yeah. Very well played. I don't think there's any reason to dredge at this point. Ah. Bronson disagrees. And he hits the grudge. Yeah. Yeah. Grudge can get rid of that birthing pie. Now, uh, Bronson going to, uh, how many cards are left? I don't know how many cards left in his deck at this point. He's going to life him alone again? Yep. I agree. And life and alone again. <coughs> the Raven's Prime first. There that dismember. Nicely done. And yeah. I mean, he never has to miss another line drop. He can start attacking for a lot of damage with that lot of fall reaches. And. Yeah, life from alone, getting back another three lands here. Continuing to grind this game out, Bronson. And uh, I mean, Andrew really needs to top deck his one of Revelar, or he's in a world of world of hurt. Sure. Uh, you know, it's also, well, he's got enough cards at this point in his hand that he could just kill him with the 
flame jab to death, but the Machaeus is also kind of. I think the Machaeus has been removed from the game. Oh, that was early. It was, yeah, yeah, it was. was uh, it was discarded to a Liliana trigger oh, yeah, you're and right, then you're removed. Right, you're right. The Juke bag. Bronson taking a draw step, and it's a life from alone. <laughs> he just can't draw anything else. Yeah. <laughs> He's cursed. Ravens grab you. Attack here now? Yeah, I think you just start attacking. You play land, you attack. And I mean, this is been an incredibly complex game. I give both players a lot of credit for uh, you know staying as tight as they have throughout this game. Every land in his deck. Yeah, he's got a lot of lands. Run! Oh, Run! Run. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a card. That is certainly a card. You <laughs> threaten it into the rest of the damages. I mean, it doesn't need to get him for much more. Two hits. This point. Uh, how many cards does Bronson have left in his deck? Can he burn out? Now, uh, Bronson going to have to uh, figure out a way to win this game. I mean, interestingly, Andrew can't really attack. Mm, sort of. Well, I guess he can, because Bronson dies in two hits. He dies in one hit. A Torpor Orb. Not excessively relevant at this point. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything left that that affects him. Andrew's dead. Yeah, I mean... Andrew is attacking. I'm going to get you four. What are you going to do? Constant mists. Well, I mean, Bronson can essentially block forever with the Love Flurry <laughs> if sure. he needs to. And then, well, it comes into play taps, so we actually cannot do that. Well done, Wizards, preventing that from happening. <laughs> <laughs> Of four. There's a burning pod. Wow. Such draw steps. Very nice. Is um, he going to. He's not going to sacrifice Thrawn. Oh, I don't think so. You see the determined face of Andrew Cunio. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a finals game that, that he's had to work extremely hard. That is for. a Gandalfian expression. <gasps> he drew Liliana. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my god, this is like the best finals game ever. Oh my gosh, alright. You really do have a countryside man crusher. Oh on my this god, deck. this is. I love a countryside crusher. <laughs> oh, you do, whatever. Buddy. And you're like, whatever. I guess you shall pass. <laughs> And uh, time to activate lava flow reaches and start getting in there. Draft judge, please report to the scorekeeping station. Draft judge to the scorekeeping station. Tax so four, six. six. Andrew's down to nine now. Now Andrew's dead next turn if he doesn't draw a creature here. Did he draw a creature? Nope. And that's Ooh. it. Wow, congratulations, Bronson Magnin. I mean, that was a. Uh, 
Congratulations, your Grand Prix Lincoln, Nebraska modern champion going to his first Pro Tour. And yeah, Pro Tour Avicen restored in Barcelona. He's going to Spain. He's going to Spain. He couldn't even believe it. You know, he got yeah. through his quarterfinal match and he's like, am I, am I going to the Pro Tour? Am I, go <laughs> am I going to the Pro Tour? <laughs> yes, you are. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, there you see. Yeah. <laughs> the shiny Liliana. Uh, foil Liliana. Yeah, Florida has been having a couple of really uh, good years on the Pro Tour. And uh, Bronson Magnet is adding to their ranks. Coming to Pro Tour Avicen Restore. Yeah. Wow. Jeez, these guys. Pat Cox. David Sharfman. Yeah, you ever see like a, just a, a boxing match where both yeah. boxers are just not other, to mention you know, Ben Stark. Yeah, you know? <laughs> well, we talk about we talk about like uh, haymaker magic, but yeah. you ever see like just like both boxers are just slumped over there, like they're like resting their foreheads almost it's on like each other's last shoulders. Round. They're, they're just, just kind of so like, tired. That's what it was like. Oh man, they're just kind of like. Ugh. So that was that Such was an just incredible match. Yeah, it went back and forth both times. We thought maybe maybe. Thrum, the last troll was gonna was gonna get there, but the last troll. <laughs> wow! And that was that was incredible. And I, I mean, I'm so happy. That is the that is the deck that I've been I've been literally Ladies talking about this deck. Sure. Like, we haven't had it on camera until it was playing for talking. Right. right. I, you know, I saw the deck in round four, and I was just so excited about it. And I, you know, I think this is. Such an incredible deck, and after round one of day two, he was X two one. So right. he had to win out. Right. And so you're saying he hasn't lost today. What? He hasn't lost today. No, no, he lost. He lost the first round today. Oh, okay. No, he was X one one going into. Oh, day okay. Two. I got you. I got you. And uh, on day one, he had lost a round because remember he right. he had responded to a pestermite as opposed to responding to the trigger on the pestermite. Right. Oh, right, right, yeah. right, right. And that was him. Yeah. And now he's the champion. Yeah. It's, uh, Grand Prix Lincoln, know. our modern, our Pretty modern Grand incredible. Prix. Seven hundred and sixteen players started. Seven hundred and fifteen players. Pat and Bronson on the back. Yep. All right, maybe seven hundred and fourteen. Me and Drew might be a little salty. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I don't know. I think Andrew's got to be uh, yeah. after you know a match like that. I mean, yeah. I mean, for, for Andrew, it's all gravy. Once he got past the, the quarterfinals, he, mm -hmm. he was really he was looking to qualify for Pro Tour Barcelona. Pro Tour Avicen he Restored. There. He got there. So both these players are uh, also... Uh, yeah, another notch on his resume also. Yeah. Uh, also earning, you know, spots. I mean, Luis Scott Vargas already already qualified. Mm -hmm. And then who was, who's the fourth player with... Uh, um, oh, that was uh, it was Samuel... Uh, he, uh, he beat... Uh, Friedman. Samuel Friedman. Yeah, Samuel Friedman. Thank right. you. Who beat so, Mary Jacobson. It was a long final finals. match. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My brain yeah, is... Yeah, that was a long match. It went the full three games. Trying to log everything that was going it on went, in the game. It, yeah. went, it probably went, what, would you say 95 out of 120 cards? Yeah. Perhaps more. I mean, I think Bronson had less than 10 cards left in his deck at right. the end there. And, and, and honestly, there weren't that many cards left in Andrew's deck either. Yeah. And both of them were... Yeah, we saw that go 90. I would say 95 out of 120. That's a game. It's a game of magic. So uh, I saw I saw uh, Michael Hetrick uh, was talking on Twitter, and I saw him be like, "Oh no, we're not gonna be able to play Loom after this GP." <laughs> so that's gonna certainly change. You saw a couple decks, I think. Will change. I mean, how do you think the deck that didn't make the top eight here was? Andrew Olschwager's um, Black White Swag deck. Mm -hmm. How do you think that deck's positioned against the Loam deck? Uh, I mean, it's Surgical Extractions. Right? Right. Uh, I think he only had one, but you know, if he had had more, then you know that could that could do some work. Uh, surgical Extraction Life from Loam obviously takes a massive chunk out of right. uh, you know Bronson's game plan, but. You know, game one it just seems like a fix <laughs> for the black white deck. But I mean, it seemed like, like, a, lot, cast, like, that seemed like a lot and... of a lot of our matches that we saw with the black white deck. So what what are your takeaways deck wise? Black black white black white uh, swag, mm -hmm. blue white Tron. You know, we saw it looked awesome. Malira Pod looked tremendous. Yep. But really, the breakout deck here is Agro Loom. Not a deck Definitely. that a lot of people were playing. Yeah. We're only, we're and only. I think you know. I think something great about this event is that this might just change the modern format entirely. I I, I think because, we saw a lot of game changers here. You know, I think 
you know, Mono Blue Fairies, which was, you know, probably the most played tier 1.5 deck. Right. Is that deck even playable now well, that I mean, a flame jabbing deck? I, I guess, but I mean, we saw, we saw, we did see the deck make the top eight, right? It made but, the top eight, but. but. But it but changes this, yeah, this the composition set. of the Swiss I changes by the results of this topic. Exactly. Yeah, and that's yeah, what I'm saying. I think yeah, that, yeah. Uh, you know, Bronson might be one of you know a I mean, very you, small number of players. I don't know if I want to play. Jab I don't know if I want to play. Okay. I'm good. How you doing? Hey, buddy. I told you. I know. <laughs> you yeah, said you were going to win. We had a lot of Floridians uh, cheering you on. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Sick. Bring it in. <laughs> it's awesome. So <laughs> we, get, we get some deck lists, partial and otherwise. Yeah. There, I gotta squeeze in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, go. that was the finals, man. Yeah, was, it was. was. Did you think you had that game up. the whole time, or I, I, I thought I did until we had the throne. Right, and then you were like, like oh right, no, my outs are Liliana, or I can race him with a seismic assault if I draw it. Did you have any seismic assaults left? Yeah, there are two left in the deck. Oh, okay. I felt, like we saw them. I felt like we saw all the seismic assaults go by while you were dredging the Oh, there were only like, you know, 12 cards left in your deck or so at the end. Yeah, as soon as the smart decision just to draw it, I don't Yeah, like you that. had like a one and three to just hit it. Right. Yeah, and I got two worms and lots of lands I could just shoot them down. Right. So, and I can chump block once with that land. Right. Once every other yeah. turn. Yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. That was, that was really exciting. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I tweeted uh, your, your comment after the quarterfinals where you were just like, oh my God, did I just, did cool. I just pop over the yeah, You, you seemed sick. a little stunned. Well, yeah. Was that your reaction? I mean, was... Well, I've been like taking the whole day one one game at a time. Sure. So like when I made the top eight, it didn't even really click till I got to the, the quarterfinals. I'm like, wow, what's going on here? You know? <laughs> what, what are the implications yeah. of this match? What are the implications exactly? So what, what do you, uh, how do you see yourself, uh, you're going to go to Barcelona, obviously. Uh, yeah, definitely. How, how long have you wanted to get to the Pro Tour? Um, since I was 16, like, <laughs> Ice Age. <laughs> awesome. Uh, that is about as awesome as it gets. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you, what do you, how do you think you uh, prepare for something like that? Well, I'll, I'll like test with the Florida boys, like, uh, uh, like I'll ask Sharkman if he wants to test. Sure. And, uh, John Coulier, who's just, I don't know if he's qualified, but he's just an amazing deck builder. Yep. An amazing deck builder. And he's responsible for like 95% of that list. Okay, yeah. So he's the man, John Coulier. We were actually mentioning his name. He was uh, sending messages to us on Twitter while you were playing. Yeah, he was like, this matchup's good. I tested yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we were, uh, it's been a long day. You've been, you just played a long match. Uh, get a look at your. Grand Prix Lincoln, Nebraska champion. Yeah. Anyone you want to say hello to at home before we... Uh... First modern Grand Prix. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to say hi to my friends in Naples. Uh, Mark, Sheridan, Griffin, um, Randall, uh, Manny and Orlando, John and Bradenton. You know, you guys are you guys are great. You don't know that they're watching or anything. Yeah. <laughs> I kept they're glued. Messages. They're glued. Yeah. Awesome. Well, again, right. congratulations. Thanks, Look congratulations. forward to seeing you in Barcelona. Right. Really good Brew up you. something really exciting. We'll get there. <laughs> All right, take your. All right. Show, oh yeah, so we're we're gonna be. Uh, well, I'm. You're gonna. Are you going to Baltimore? Um, next weekend. Yeah. Uh, unlikely. I've yeah. Been traveling a lot for magic. Yeah, recently, yeah. So. I, I I'm taking a week off before uh, going to Grand Prix Seattle in two weeks, but this next weekend is Grand Prix Baltimore. Yeah. Uh, so Rashad will be there. What's the crew for uh, Baltimore? Rashad's like, I don't know. Yeah, that was a tired. long match. It's, it's, been a, it's been a long day. Um, Sheldon. Sayden Sheldon. Dane Young's going to do text coverage. And someone else. And Rashad. And Me. Yeah. It's been a long day. It's all right. Don't worry about it. No stress. Nate Price. Nate Price. Oh, man. It's going to be a sick little squad. Yeah. Yeah. So you should definitely tune in. Watch that. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be back. Again, in two weeks, I'm going to be doing Grand Prix Seattle, which I'm pretty excited about. I'll be working with uh, Marshall Sutcliffe from Limited Resources Podcast, I think. Awesome. Yeah. We're going to be Marshall's talking about... A really cool guy. Yeah. We're going to talk about the, the new Dark Ascension in a Strad, in a Strad Limited format. It'll be fun to commentate on that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. But... Uh, I mean, it's been a great weekend here. I've had a great time. Yeah. You know, looking at this format, getting to see all the new decks. I'm really excited about what this means for the format. And uh, I guess we're ready to go. Take one deck. Take take away one deck. You're gonna take away the agro, agro loam. Yes. I'm, I'm I'm really gonna look at black white swag. 
as, as something to yeah. play in this format. And and certainly looking at the Tron list, which just seemed like Extremely super powerful. powerful. Did more powerful things than yeah. any, any other deck. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was was quicker than the aggro decks. It was a control combo deck that was just faster than the aggro decks. So, yeah. all right. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Professional Event Services for hosting this incredible event. Yeah. Like thank GGS. Yeah, ironically named. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank GGS Live for uh, bringing you this incredible coverage all weekend. Yeah, and aptly, aptly, us to aptly, be here. aptly named on that finals, right? Yeah, that was that was a good game. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to thank you, yeah, Mr. Man. Brian David Marshall. That was Marshall. fun. Glad we got to work together. Time. And uh, signing off, I'm Jacob Van Lunen for Brian David Marshall. I hope you had a good time watching us. Be well. Awesome.